Hi, I'm Ian Wallace. Uh, you can find me at uh, Ian underscore on Hill Road on Instagram and Twitter and other services. I'm uh, here this morning to talk to you about an update that I've done to the shutter timer that uh, I created new software for about a month ago. Some of you may have seen that I wrote a new set of software for the Camera Dactyl uh, project on YouTube uh, that allows you to time an analog camera shutter. Um, and that new software was great, but it still left me with a lot of spaghetti for the hardware. And so over the last month or so, I've been fiddling around uh, and I've created a complete update to the whole project. So this is a completely new set of hardware and a completely new set of software um, that does some things that I needed it to do and uh, hopefully you'll find interesting too. So uh, this is the new camera shutter timer. It's all completely mounted up um, with some inspiration here from a gentleman who wrote to me after the last project to use the copper pipe. Uh, and in this project we have the laser and the sensor at the bottom here all permanently aligned it's vertically adjustable, so it's quite easy to place different types of cameras into the, uh, into the device. Um, we've updated from the Arduino Uno to an Arduino Nano. I've added an LCD display so that you can get immediate feedback. The whole thing will run on a battery powered connection, so it doesn't have to be connected to your computer. I've also added a safety switch for the laser so that we can turn the laser on and off and be a little bit safer and down here in the corner we've got a data logger so you can put a camera in here you can say do a dozen shots through on the uh, setting that you're interested in testing 125th or 60th as you do it the software will work out what the nearest speed is so it'll probably work out that you're aiming for 125th it'll show the speed that you've actually done up here and as it starts to collect shutter information, it'll start to produce statistics. So you'll get some information telling you the average time and the standard deviation from that average. And all of that data is automatically logged onto a little data card down here. So you can take this to your workshop. You can take the timings for your camera. You can take the little data card out and go back to your computer and you can write up a data sheet for that camera very easily because all of the settings have been recorded onto the card in a file for you. So that's the uh, introduction to the new shutter timer that I've produced. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shoot some film with uh, the thing actually in use so that you can see how it works and see what it looks like. Thank you. Okay, so here we are. Here's the new camera shutter timer. And uh, I'm going to run it on the power bank uh, and I'm just going to take some exposures with this uh, Pentax and uh, have a look at the shutter speeds and, and run you through how this works. So I'm going to run the whole thing on a power bank so it's not connected to my computer at all. So we'll just turn it on and uh, hopefully you can see here the software is booted up and it says it's ready for run 267. Uh, each time you do a test run on here the software will give that test sequence a new unique number so you can tie it to the camera that you're testing and you know which results go with which camera. So I'm going to take my Pentax here and I've just put a little bit of tape over the viewfinder here. We just want to try and reduce the chance of us uh, getting any stray uh, light from the, the laser. The laser isn't on at the moment. You can see the laser's off. So I can position the camera uh, and I think I've already set the height of this. Uh, so that it will be correct. So we can turn on the switch and the laser is now on. You could see it on the back of the uh, shutter blind and I'm set up at 125th on the camera. So we'll just press the shutter and we've got our first reading. It's reading number one. It was 8.19 milliseconds which is actually 1 over 122 instead of 1 over 125. The software has identified that you're going for a 125th of a second so it's recognized that this is what it should be at most likely speed. Um, there is an error of 0.19 milliseconds uh, and it's plus 0.19 milliseconds and you're out by 2.4 percent. So let's take a few more exposures. So give it another one. 
number two. And uh, obviously statistics, you require a group of records. And three is hardly good statistics, but it's a point at which you can start to say a little bit more about what is being done. So now the display is showing us that the average here is 8.1 milliseconds, that the average error is 0.1 milliseconds plus, and that the average error is plus 1.3%. So it's pretty accurate. Um, we've got a standard deviation of 0.1 milliseconds and the number of records in the test set is three. And so I can just carry on with this and it'll keep updating the data. And all the time, the information that you're seeing on the display is being recorded in a file with the test number on the little data logger. Now there are a few other things that happen with this. So for example, if I turn the shutter speed right down to one second, it'll just automatically try and adjust to that on the program. So exposure five was 0.94 seconds. You notice the display is now recording in seconds, not in milliseconds. Uh, we've got an error of 55 milliseconds here and 5.6% uh, short. And again, we can go through the same sequence. I can run second one and a third one. And as soon as it sees that third one, we start getting the statistics. So I've got an average of 951 milliseconds. On average, I'm out by 48 milliseconds. I'm 4.9% five, down on the actual speed. And then I've got my standard deviation of my number. And again, all of this has been recorded onto the data logger. Um, I'll provide you with some information about the circuitry that I've put here. Um, but this started off just as the very simple circuit with the laser. But I really wasn't happy that um, the laser was loose on the desk all the time, which is obviously a bit dangerous. I didn't really want to have to have it on when I didn't need it because it's dangerous. Uh, and the, I may be able to provide some photographs of how I actually constructed this, but this was constructed so that the laser was already pretty centrally aligned before I put it in. The laser is glued in here and the sensor is glued in here. And because it's deep in the pipe, it's actually really quite difficult to um, look at the laser, which is what we obviously want. The board here, I can swing it round, show you the other side. A little bit of wiring behind the switch so that the microprocessor knows when the switch is on and off. And a little bit of uh, uh, chocolate strip there just to simplify the wiring on the front at the microprocessor. And I've used a bit of uh, Cat5 cable here just to give me wiring down to the laser and down to the sensor. And we've got uh, a hole here so that you can adjust the brightness of the LCD display. Because the LCD display only has four rows of 20 characters, I have had to really compress what you see on here. So there's not quite as much um, descriptive wording around the, the, the numbers uh, as there was in the version that logs onto the computer monitor. And if you have this plugged into a computer, you'll get exactly the same information on the monitor, just as you did with the original program. Uh, but you won't, it, it doesn't, it doesn't have a longhand version of everything. It just produces exactly what you see here on the on the monitor. Uh, and that's it really. Um, it's now a functioning shutter timer system. I can take it out whenever I need it, just switch it on, um, run the thing through, and very quickly I've got an assessment of the shutter. And I built it like this because I want to be able to put some big cameras through here, um, and I need the height to be able to see how the shutters are performing. Um, I have seen cameras that don't have a lens as part of the body are obviously much easier to do than the ones that do have the lens integral with them. Those ones you tend to have to put them closer to the ends of the uh, either the sensor or the laser in order to get the, the, the light to come through correctly. Uh, and you need to remember to put them on a large aperture. Um, but all in all, um, it's now very simple to operate and that's exactly what I was aiming for. And um, as I say, I'll put the circuit up. The new code will go on to my Git repository. So if you want the code, you'll be able to download it. Uh, and um, that's it, really. Um, I'll show you a, uh, a, a version of the data that's on the um, logger so that you can see exactly what we're outputting. Um, but there we go. So I'm just going to remove the data card from the data logger. You can see it's just a little micro SD card there. And I'm going to put it into this uh, holder so that it can be 
put into my computer. Okay, so I'm just going to push the card in. The card's now in the computer and here the file explorer has opened and here's our test file. So the test file is ST267, that's the number of the test we ran. And uh, if we open it up, we can just view it in Notepad. And here is all the information exactly as we saw it on the display when we were running the test. So there's our first test, which was 120 seconds of a, uh, of a second. Uh, and then you can take that file and you can store it or you can print it and put it with a camera, whatever you need to do. So there it is, uh, the new shutter timer with the version 2 software. Um, none of the components I've used are very expensive. I mean, the little data logger for the SD cards, a couple of quid. Um, even the display, I think, is about six or seven pounds. So the whole thing really is not a very expensive uh, thing to create. Uh, and the uh, Arduino Nano, uh, and to be honest, I used this uh, board with the uh, easier connections for the wires. Um, you probably could have used an Arduino Uno and carried on with that for for similar cost. Um, yeah, all of the code will be on my GitHub, uh, which is uh, github.com forward slash Ian on a Hill Road, or one word. Uh, and then you should find it under the camera shutter timer project, and this is the version 2 code. And uh, somewhere where you can find this video, you should also find links for the pictures of the diagram. Um, I'm not going to go through all of the code. Um, it's very heavily commented, so anybody reading the code should be able to uh, learn from it, make changes to it. Um, there is one restriction, which is that the memory of the Arduino Nano is so small uh, that you are limited to the number of exposures that you can do in a session. But everything in my code is parameterized, so you can experiment with changing that, or if you have a device with more memory, you'll be able to increase the counts. Um, Great, well, if you like that, do give me your feedback. Um, please do visit my Instagram at ian underscore on a hill road, and I uh, hope you like some of the pictures that I take.